um, six, five, four, three, two, one. And Stephanie, we've got we are a go. from the attendee list too. Oh yeah, that's right. I will. I am pulling up that uh, list right now, so I can get them moved over. Make sure I move the correct people over. Give me about ten seconds, and I'll have them moved up. All right, looks like we have everybody but Daryl, maybe. There he goes. Okay, and then everybody else is a caller, so I think we're as good as we can get here. All right, well, we do have uh, a lot of folks on the call today. Including, um, I know we've got one new committee members, one new member and another that I think is running but to be here presently. Um, and so perhaps more than usual, it's important to do introductions, I think. Um, so I'm going to just uh, roll through the people I've got on my list and uh, just be prepared to kind of say who you are, um, name, organization, yeah, just the basics. Um, my name is Freddie O'Connell. In addition to chairing the HMIS Oversight Committee, I'm also a member of the COC Homelessness Planning Commission and represent uh, Metro Council's 19th district. And I will pass the mic to April. Hi, my name is April Calvin and um, I work at the Salvation Army and I also hold a position on Homeless Planning Council. All right, thank you, April. Welcome. Ben? Hello, good morning. Ben Grady, uh, Nashville Rescue Mission. Uh, I guess I, should, I could specify database administrator of Nashville Rescue Mission. Uh oh, I just realized that it's got the wrong. <laughs> it's got the wrong. Uh, I had to. I, I accidentally left my laptop at home. That that keyboard is not me. Uh, I'm gonna have to figure that out. But any any event, I'll help. You, you on. appear to be super fresh today. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right, thanks. Uh, Daryl. Um, Daryl just sent me an email that he's having the eye trouble, Maybe. but to tell everyone hello, um, and it's Daryl from Atticus House. <laughs> okay. okay, very good. I see Daryl in here twice, so maybe he's having twice as many problems. Um, great. Uh, Judy is with us this morning. Good morning, Judy. Good morning. So Judy Tackett uh, with the Homeless Impact Division. As of here as a visitor. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. Uh, Rachel, you're up. Good morning, everyone. Rachel Cook with the Homeless Impact Division, um, HMIS Administrator. Great. Martina? Good morning, everybody. Martina Condren here. Um, I'm the Operations Director at Room in the Inn. Great, thank you. Welcome. Rob? Good morning. I am Rob Nash, and I am um, glad to be joining the group. Appreciate the opportunity. I am a nurse practitioner at Vanderbilt in the HIV clinic, and I am working with the village at Glencliff. Rob, thanks and welcome. Uh, Rob is one of our new members of the HMIS Oversight Committee, and we are delighted to have him. Ryan? Brian LeSueur, Executive Director at Community Care Fellowship, and I'm also part of the COC Shelter Committee. Great, thank you. Shanley? Hi, Shanley Degnan at the Homeless Impact Division. Great, thanks. Uh, Stephanie? Uh, Stephanie Cooper, I'm with Center Stone Speech Recovery Program, um, and I'm also a member of the Veterans Committee. Great, thank you. And Tracy. 
Good morning, uh, Tracy Pekovich with the Mental Health Cooperative. I'm a program manager uh, and one of the programs I oversee there is our homeless services program. Great, thank you. And I've got a couple of callers. I don't know who, who those folks are. If you want to say hi this morning, uh, you are welcome to do so. Good morning, everyone. I'm Brandy Jones, Executive Director of Crescent Community Health Services. Great, thanks, Brandy. Welcome. And then, Stephanie, you're welcome to say hi from Metro ITS if you like. Hi, my name is Stephanie. I'm with Metro ITS, and I am your moderator in the background to make sure this runs as smoothly as possible. You know, we may thanks have had so a, a slight, um, not best start this morning. No worries. We literally couldn't do this without you. So once again, we are meeting virtually. Um, all right, we will go and drop into our agenda. Um, thanks everyone for uh, introducing yourselves. We do have some guests today, so pretty big agenda. We'll probably take the whole hour. I'll start with a report and announcements. Um, as most of you know, I've been doing this. I think I joined maybe in 2018 um, and took over uh, as chair not long after that. And then, we, you know, as we have watched the COC and HPC come together, there have been a lot of changes to our committees. HMIS uh, has been chugging right along. We dove into some important work, uh, revisiting and revising foundational documents as the COC HPC transitioned the HMIS lead uh, from MDHA to the Metro Homeless Impact Division. So a lot of big changes that have happened in this committee. And one of the reasons we went through uh, the foundational documents to shore them up, modernize them was actually to um, empower our local HMIS implementation to be able to take advantage of secure data sharing. So. A lot of people on this call actually participated in a workshop with HUD TA. Uh, I began this journey when Nicole Williams was still with MHED, and now I've been working closely with uh, Rachel and Shanley. Uh, and today is fairly exciting, not only because we have some new members uh, joining the committee, but I've been working with uh, Judy and Rachel in particular uh, to prepare to transition. Uh, after several years as chair, I feel like I accomplished my big goals and now I'm eager to pass on a leadership opportunity um, as we look to the future of the committee when I hope we are continuing to focus on data quality um, and increasing the number of participating agencies and just continuing to build a better HMIS implementation locally. So after working with um, Judy and Paula and Rachel, um, it's a little unusual the way we're structured. I mean, it's a still fairly new uh, arrangement with how our committees are, charter, bylaws, all that stuff. This isn't or the kind of ordinary process that I've been through a number of times where the committee just elects things that there's a little bit of, um, you know, kind of coming in from the outside through the COC process, but we, we've made it as collaborative as we can. And I'm excited to announce today that uh, Stephanie has agreed to assume the role of chair and Will Connolly, who is joining the committee um, who has a lot of background and is representing a provider, um, knows the Nashville context well from his previous work with the what was then the Homeless Commission, uh, will be serving in the role of vice chair. So I'm happy to complete today's agenda, but as we move forward, I'm looking forward to uh, Stephanie kind of taking us through that and, and convening us with Rachel and Shanley's help. So Stephanie, thank you for your willingness to do that. I don't know if you want to say anything about what you hope the committee starts to work on over the next several months. Um, I'm excited to take over, especially I think you've been you us through a lot of the hard work, uh, getting us to the data sharing um, open system thing. So I'm excited to move forward with the data quality and just kind of uh, continuing to get people involved, community buy-in, that sort of thing, and then just making sure we're getting quality data entered. So I'm excited. Great. And Rachel and Judy, thank you both for all your help um, in kind of preparing for the transition. I think this will be a very smooth process. Um, when Will gets here. Oh, Will is here. Perfect timing. Hey. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you are here just as we're announcing the transition, Will. So welcome. And uh, if you don't mind taking a second to say hi. 
Thanks. Yeah, they're sorry I'm late. Um, <clears throat> yeah, anyway, I'm just like, appreciate you all um, wanting me to be here. Uh, HMIS um, was something that took me a while to like really embrace. And then, um, you know, so I do have some like some baggage around it, like, or I beat myself up a little bit about like not embracing it so quickly. But um, yeah, I just, I'm excited about the leadership that the impact division has now, like the, the budget, you know, the small but mighty budget for it, which is great. And um, the leadership from this committee. And so just like grateful to be a part of it. Hope I can help us use our local data to, to end homelessness. So happy great. To Thanks, Will. Um, and welcome. So Will is our newest member and will be uh, joining Stephanie in leadership as vice chair of the committee. And I imagine they will continue working very closely with Rachel and Shanley. Um, that is really the biggest and only announcement I have for today. So we will move on with the agenda. I will turn it over to Judy to give us an update from the Metro Homeless Impact. So thank you so much for having me. I am actually coming with an ask to you um, today. Um, as you know, we are working, homelessness really has shifted um, what it looks like right now. Uh, it has shifted really from a um, majority of people always being in shelters and through COVID, uh, we have seen a lot of people staying outside longer or moving outside. But without the point in time count, we went to the point in time count committee to come up with how can we, or we have a point in time count this year, but not an outdoor shelter, uh, outdoor count. We have only the shelter count. And with that, it became really, really important that we are also looking, how can we actually get a good feel of what's happening and what homelessness looks like in Nashville? And um, so I have gone to the point in time count committee and the data committee with an ask uh, of making a recommendation up to the homelessness planning council to support our uh, push and our bringing together outdoor groups to do um, consistent data entry in HMES on outdoor homelessness uh, as part of their outreach effort. And I'm gonna give it over real quickly uh, to Shandley and while, um, so so that she can kind of um, give you an, an update of the cur current data that we have on outdoor homelessness. And um, before I do so though, I wanted to mention that we are working very closely with Ben over at Nashville Rescue Mission on release of information, National Rescue Mission is gearing up to um, share data with HMAS and get them into HMAS. But right now, the focus is how can we get the release of information so we can do forward and people know what's going on. And um, with that, it's really a focus on getting better data and quality data on outdoor homelessness. So, Shanley, if you can, um, if uh, Stephanie, if you could give the presenting ball to Shanley, that will be helpful. Yes, thank you so much. So while I wait for that, um, so Rachel actually had pulled some slides together with data about street outreach from the last couple of years. And I apologize, some of you have seen this set of slides several times now. Um, this is a big push and so we're gonna continue to talk about it and make sure that people really understand what we're asking. So give me one second. Can you all see this PowerPoint? Hopefully, yes. <laughs> um, okay, yes. So, okay, great. So this is some information about street and street outreach data that we have in HMIS from 2019. As you can see, there are four participating agencies that entered data that year into a street outreach specific EDA mode or project, um, and then we served 494 unduplicated clients that year. In 2020, you can see there's a pretty big jump in participating agencies and almost double the amount of clients served. So right now in our community, and we've talked about this a good bit, we're in a position where we use HMIS as far as HUD requires it. 
and the data absolutely jumps around with what is being funded by HUD at that time. And so this is also somewhat of a reflection of that. So this year, or in 2020, we received a large amount of ESG TV dollars, and it, um, that funding source actually funded quite a few new street outreach projects or existing projects that were now being covered by this funding. And so with that new requirement came awesome new data, as you can see. Moving on though, so in terms of coordinated entry, so we have used coordinated entry for a lot in the last several years, and that was really important for us as a community um, as part of our journey to feeling comfortable with data sharing and feeling good about HMIS. Um, this slide here, the, the gray bars are from 2019 and the blue are from 2020. So these two charts compare what was entered into street outreach projects versus what we knew to, knew to be true of um, people experiencing literal homelessness that were entered into coordinated entry. So in 2019, we had 494 people entered into a street outreach project and 2,780 that were identified as literally homeless in coordinated entry. And the really important distinction is that coordinated entry is not meant to be a reporting tool or a systems evaluation tool. It is meant to be the resource and referral wing of the work that we are doing. So each year annually, the um, federal government and other providers or funding providers only see this small sliver of the work that we've done. So while coordinated entry will continue to remain incredibly important, um, this in 2019, we only reported 17% of what we knew to be true of people experiencing outdoor homelessness to the federal government. And then in 2020, we reported about 40%. And then also just taking into account that coordinated entry doesn't capture everything either. So that, that isn't really even the full scope of what we need, what we know to be true. Um, I tried to condense that. I hope I didn't make it confusing. I know we have a tight agenda. Um, so Judy, I'll pass it back to you. And if you could give me the presenter um, ball, um, then I'm gonna pull up my actual ask. So again, we have seen through COVID, there are, um, we have seen the population shift to outdoors. And in addition, we also have um, people being housed through the housing search. So it's really hard to even come up with an, a ballpark estimate of what homelessness outdoors really look like. And so my ask to this committee, is to make a recommendation to the Homelessness Planning Council for the Homelessness Planning Council to endorse sending a message out to nonprofit providers who have outreach programs. And that message uh, would look like uh, something like the Homelessness Planning Council strongly encourages all outreach groups to participate in data collection through HMAS to ensure that Nashville has a solid assessment of the outdoor homelessness situation in Nashville. We ask organizations, and we would be the Homelessness Planning Council, ask organizations with professional street outreach services to enter data into HMAS slash coordinated entry and work with uh, the Homeless Impact Division to do so. The goal is to be able to pull the first monthly street outreach report through HMAS by the end of April. This report then shows uh, aggregate unduplicated number of homeless people uh, uh, living outdoors. Uh, gender, race, age, length of homelessness, veteran status, income slash benefits, disabilities, et, et cetera. So that is really my ask to you. Uh, we have also completely talked to some um, outreach workers on what some of the hesitation and concerns from them are. And mostly it's an added burden on outreach workers. That's how they feel about it. Uh, and then also what happens when people are in HMS, when the data is in there, are they just added to a wait list? And so going through a lot of that, um, one of the counter arguments or some of the counter arguments that I wanted uh, to bring up and how we wanna really uh, work with organizations is we need community standards developed um, with input from outreach workers. We have already started 
working towards that last year and then right before COVID hit, we did not actually, uh, we were not able to continue to look at what those minimal standards should be and what it entails. What, what do we want as a community? Um, what does our street outreach look like? And as part of that, um, I've also looked at how many outreach workers do we actually have? And uh, we have thereabouts of about 40 full-time positions at different organizations. Um, and so when you look at what um, outreach, you know, I mean, the, the, the rough estimate is that would mean that um, outreach workers, if we actually coordinate um, uh, better, would have to enter maybe 25 to 30 people a month. Uh, in addition, so once this, this initial push is done, it's like that's, that may be uh, something, it just becomes more doable when we, we think of there are quite a few more outreach workers than we've had in the past. And we can come up with something so that we, we ease the burden of data entry on, on each outreach, outreach uh, person so they can actually focus on outreach as well and mostly on, on their work. Um, also, when you think of street outreach workers, uh, some of the arguments are they are entering data, but they're entering data for their clients. And I'm thinking as part of an assessment before somebody becomes your client, you have to do some type of assessment. So why not include HMAS as part of that assessment? And then um, through care coordination meetings that we have, um, somebody doesn't necessarily need to be uh, automatically a housing navigator of a person that they enter into HMAS. That's, that can be adjusted and decided uh, through the coordinated entry and, and care coordination meetings. So again, the main ask is we just need a better sense of what does homelessness in Nashville looks like, look like, and without this outdoor, ongoing, consistent data entry, uh, we just will not ever know about that. The mayor's office has created a task force on affordable housing. I'm presenting this evening, and one of the big lags is the, is the data. They're going to be like, what's the need? for housing for this population. And I'm gonna go by an old pit count. That is just not good enough. We can do better. And this committee completely understands that. And so that's why uh, I'm coming with this ask to this committee. And I think it will be very strong for the Homelessness Planning Council to endorse this. And that's my presentation. Great, thank you, Judy. I add something really briefly to what Judy said. Um, Many of you are providers, and so you will have seen my email about some of the changes being implemented to HMIS next week. These are going to make it very, very efficient and doable for street outreach providers to add that project in addition to coordinated entry. So we've talked a lot about this being more of a mindset shift than a real data entry burden. Um, it'll be like two clicks if you've already entered them in a coordinated entry. So I just want people to feel like this isn't a huge data entry ask. It's just a mindset shift. Thanks, Judy and Shanley both. Um, I, I will say from having worked through uh all of the past couple of years and going through uh all of the documentation uh, i can speak very clearly to how important uh hmis is to giving um both our local mhid also mdha and eventually hud community providers i mean our whole network uh showcases how better data drives better policy so i'm personally eager to support this and would uh entertain a motion to resolve that we fulfill Judy's ask through language as she had incorporated in her final slide there. I second. Well, I, I was going to see if somebody on the committee would make the motion, but you're welcome to second it when somebody does, or you can make the motion. I, I would like, um, maybe, uh, Maybe I didn't, I might have missed something, but I'm just trying to understand what do we as a commit as a committee, how do we help uh, to to bring this to pass? Like what do, what do we specifically, are, what are we doing? 
should I jump in on that? So my, yeah. I really don't want to be always the one from MHIT that uh, we are the only ones pushing for this. So we went to three committees to really go up and make it's it's one is educating all of us and uh, being public meetings. So the COC knows what's going on and what we are pushing for and why and have this discussion and then for the homelessness planning council to understand it and coming from the three data committees or data, you know, anybody who, who works on data, I think is very strong and then. We at um, Homeless Impact Division will continue to be the driving force to get the message out, but we can really say this has been uh, vetted through these different uh, pieces, uh, these different um, parts of the COC. So that's, I think, is stronger than just me sending out an email asking something. Okay. Okay. So basically, we're just making a motion to make a recommendation like that we agree that this would be a good thing to do. That's right. I mean, basically, okay. Okay. to me, Ben, the spirit of the resolution would be that this committee, like the two others, uh, would go back to the HPC with a committee report, more or less endorsing this approach. Okay. Thank you. Yep. That's a good question, though. Is anybody willing to make that motion? I'll make the motion, Ryan. Great, thank you, Ryan. April, your second would be valid now. I can't get my finger on the mute button fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got a motion and a second uh, to resolve that we will, as a committee, um, recommend to the Homelessness Planning Council uh, what presented to us. And we've got the language captured, and I'm sure, Judy, you do. Um, Rachel, do you do you feel like you have enough to capture that resolution with the language without my rereading it? Yes, I can piece that together. Thank you. <laughs> All right, great. Um, does anybody have other thoughts on this? Any discussion on the, the motion? Yeah, I know we don't have much time, but um, I had a question or two. Just um, in that CE number, um, like the 2400, that number, um, I'm assuming there are people counted in that that are not living up time, is that right? Or is that, like that would include people living so, in condition in other places, right? Yeah, so we looked at the prior living situation question, which is the where did you sleep last night? Um, so it's not everyone who was entered into CE, it's just people who were staying in place not meant for habitation um, uh, okay. when they were entered. Oh, nice, okay, good, thanks. And then I guess just the audience for this, like I'm all about, I mean, I definitely think we should talk to providers. Um, and it'd be nice to know really what we're talking about here a little bit. Like, if we could get more specific about, you know, what we're going to try to communicate this to you, but um, on the provider side. But also, just given the impact of like the funder, you know, like this year or in 2020, you know, we had more funding from HUD, so we had more entries in HMIS because the funder required it. Um, it would be nice at some point to talk to funders that are funding outreach in Nashville and trying to like introduce HMIS to them and educate them about how it would be nice for them to require HMIS in their contracts. But I know that gets sticky. Anyway, just one of the audience that should probably be funders at some point, um, private funders in the in Nashville and maybe Metro or whatever. Yeah, I mean, Judy, you might be able to speak to the implications on the funder side better than anybody else here besides Rachel and Shannon. Uh, yes, um, I'm sorry. I was also very slow on the mute. <laughs> um, with funders, funders have already talked to me about, and, and they are already approaching me, some of them about um, when they get certain requests for funding. Um, I'm getting approached, is this organization, how? what's their attitude towards HMS? So that is something that is already, I, I think it's appropriate to um, uh, let everyone know and at one point um, really look at what the audience is with funders and and be transparent about 
um, also let them know what they're looking for when they're asking questions about HMAS, what, what they're looking for. So that has been going on in the last couple of years. The other thing on funding that I really want to stress, HUD gives organiza uh, organizations, HUD gives more COC funding to uh, localities based on improving systems improvement. So they're comparing us against us ourselves. And um, there's still a myth in this community amongst some providers who believe it's the point in time count, kind of the higher the point in time count, the more funding we're going to get. That is not the case. It is really the better we are showing that we are building a system and they're really looking at the ability of HMES. And I think in the last few years we have, I mean, we have increased funding in the last four years uh, through just the COC fund by 90%. Um, and that is phenomenal when you look at it, it's still not enough compared to other cities, but it is because we are really having that focus on systems change and we are compared, uh, uh, they're looking at, do we make improvements? And I think HMA is, is, is the key to increasing that funding. And I think we are at the point where we need to really, just yesterday we, we started actually a resource development committee that had the first meeting yesterday to look at local funding, local fund, you know, local funders, state funding. We need to really get away to only be that COC focused uh, HUD funding and really build our system to make it functional. And HMS is just the key to that. So I hope that that helps. Thanks, Judy. Well, does that speak to some of what you? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks, Judy. Other discussion? I just want to bring it. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. We're good. Okay. Um, and Shanley, I know there's some conversation via email about this uh, between you and Kenna and I, but um, and I'm all for like, as many participants as we can uh, getting into HMIS. Um, I will say, you know, the, the thing, the only thing that like really concerns me about it at this point is just some of the, uh, what we are seeing as an agency is just the more people that are entering into HMIS, it's that sort of like uh, information kind of, and Shanley, you might even be able to explain this better than I can, but but basically what, what has been happening is from our path perspective, um, they're entering the information, it's, uh, and then they're finding that some of the information that they entered is no longer there um, or showing up because other people are entering. It has something to do with like closed system versus open system um, or programs, I guess I should say. Uh, so all of that to say, that's my concern is we add more people. Are we going to add to, are we going to increase further layers of like complication when it comes to like the data that's in there? Shanley, can you help me out with that? Because I know I didn't yes. explain that very well. <laughs> no, absolutely. So that's actually a pretty unique circumstance. The PATH project, um, Mental Health Co-op decided to lock that down just based on the nature of the services they provide and how delicate that information is. So that's actually a very unique circumstance because that project is not sharing data. So the more data is shared, the more collaborative and accurate the data becomes. So that's a pretty specific scenario that we don't expect to happen in um, other cases. And so I'm hoping that that won't happen in um, a large scale way. Yeah. Well yeah, and, and I do too. I just, I want to, I think, be mindful of that. If if the reason that that is happening is because our particular system is locked down and the reason that we're locked down is just, and we're trying to figure out, it's a, it's kind of a, it's a HIPAA thing slash an ethical thing, right? That I'm kind of debating um, because um, if it's open and they're enrolled in our system, then that's, that is identifying folks as having a mental illness and like just being cognizant about diagnosis, even though the diagnosis may not be shared, we're, we're basically saying, hey, this person has a mental illness simply because they're enrolled in this program in the first place. So trying to weed through that, yes, the releases of information, I think I'm, I'm evolving, I think, in, in, some of, in, in some of my thoughts on this, but um, but if there's other agencies that are going to participate that might have similar um, 
considerations regarding being a lockdown program versus open that just be something to consider. It's, it's unique for sure, but I don't, I wouldn't, I would anticipate that it would happen again with some other program, more people that do it. So. It's a great point. And we, so we're reaching out to HUD technical assistance to see if there are creative ways that as a community, we can avoid the scenario where an agency that wishes to protect the information from being shared isn't negatively impacted from data sharing. And so um, we're grateful to have started this conversation early with y'all so that we can figure out a solution. And one of the things I want to point out, uh, this is a really good example um, how far we've come with HMS. So just that you see, uh, we actually have Shantley in that position with data quality to help figure these type of questions out. Um, you know, where a couple of years ago or a, a year ago, there was no, you know, we, we just weren't able to even have the capacity to do so. So um, these are the things that our community needs to work through. It's all about, um, but other communities have done it too. So I, I'm, I'm confident that we can um, just in a transparent manner work through that, yes. Really quickly, um, in the interest of time, it's 9.43. So we have, I wanna make sure we at least um, get to our other guest, Brandy, um, so. Yeah. I've been watching the clock too, Rachel. Thank you. Um, other discussion on this? All right. Uh, all in favor of Ryan's motion that we recommend to the COC uh, process that would encourage street outreach participation in HMIS, please say aye. 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 Actually, hang on. In ver well, okay. <laughs> Uh, let's go through this in virtual. I need to do a roll call, uh, but I think what we've done historically in other settings, including council is we can, um, if it's a full affirmative vote, Rachel can record those voting um, as eyes. Uh, all right. So all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Rachel, in which case we can record all uh, present and voting as affirmative. Thank you, everybody. Judy, thank you for bringing that to our attention. Um, and my only comment after making that uh, resolution uh, is, you know, I think in it's very consistent with work that this committee has already been doing, which is why I'm comfortable doing it. Just you know, for the record, I wanted it to be known that this is not, not inconsistent with uh, the focus of this committee already. So, uh, Judy, we're happy to do that and uh, hope to meet that goal of getting week, uh, street outreach reports done by the end of April. So we will we will keep this committee's attention focused on how we can support that goal. Thank you so much thank you. and thanks everyone. All right, thank you. Uh, all right, we are through the agenda. Uh, is Crescent Community Health Q&A with Brandy Jones. Rachel, do you want to provide some context here? Yes, for anyone who wasn't able to make last month's meeting, we um, went over a couple of new um, interested HMIS participating agency applications. And one of them that we talked through is Crescent Community Health, um, who is a transitional housing provider. Um, a couple of us weren't as familiar um, with that agency, so we invited um, Brandy here today to um, answer any questions that this committee has um, on the nature of their work um, so that we can make the decision as a committee to onboard um, them to HMIS. So Great, Brandy, I you. believe, is in the attendees. Yes, she is. Uh, and Brandy, if you if you wouldn't mind just giving a brief introduction of, of Crest and, and yourself and your role um, as we start the conversation, please. Yeah, thanks. Good morning again, everyone. I'm um, Brandy and um, Executive Director of Crescent Community Health Services. We are not, um, we, we've gone through a kind of a rebranding, a renaming. We're fo formerly known as um, Open Door Nashville, um, but uh, there was, there's a large real estate company um, that is also named Open Door. Um, and so we just, it just was a uh, time for us to kind of move over to a new name. So um, some of 
I've met some of you guys on the call and some of you I haven't. So hello to everyone. Been around since 2015 though. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, any questions from committee members for Brandy about the organization or what their work is or how they hope to engage in HMIS? Yeah, I guess, um, Brandy, this is Ben Grady from Natural Rescue Mission. Uh, could you just take us through just a, a real brief overview of, of what you all do and um, how you how you interface or hope I should say, hope to interface with, uh, with HMIS. I'd love to. Well, um, first of all, we started off as um, transitional housing providers and have been that for, since 2015. Um, but then we were noticing that folks were coming to us sicker and sicker. <clears throat> and so we kind of um, were having to call in home health agencies. And so um, we decided that we could just, you know, bring those things in house. Um, so that that was, you know, really another reason for the the rebranding as well, um, because now we offer home health services um, to the folks uh, who call us home, and um, so we thought that it would be good because with that, um, we all, there's also with the home health agency, we're also able to do street outreach. There's no other home health agency that we know of that's willing to go to the street um, because home health, you know, is you have to have a home. And so um, we were talking to Michelle Southern about it, and um, you know, she was saying, "Would you guys be willing to to go to the street?" And the the answer is absolutely yes. Um, so that's kind of what we've kind of been moving, inching toward. Um, I just want to make sure that I'm answering the question correct. Um, so. Yeah, no, thank you, Brandy. That was, that's very helpful. Yeah, no, I mean, and that's, that's a great thing to do to be going out and, and uh, taking care of medical needs right as they, in the place where the people are. Thank you. Thank you. Mary, thank you for joining us. Um, other committee members have any questions for Brandy or about Crescent? Okay, Rachel, did you want us to take any action today or we'll come back and revisit this at a future meeting? Um, if we, what do you guys think? I don't know. I think we could take action today if everyone's ready to. Or the committee thinks there needs to be more discussion, we could continue later. I, I would leave it up to you all as staff. I mean, if you feel like um, you're ready to onboard Crescent as soon as possible, I'm, I'm happy to uh, go ahead and recommend it today. I think from what we've heard, um, this aligns really well with um, our currently um, participating agencies and we'll open that door to more um, street outreach participation as well, um, and that home health aspect. Yeah, I think that where I am is in light of Judy's presentation today and the action we've already taken. That this seems pretty consistent with that. So, um, in in light of that, is anybody willing to make a motion that we uh, accept Crescent Community Health as a participating agency for HMIS? I'll make that motion, uh, Stephanie. All right, great. Stephanie has moved it. Do we have a second? I'll second. I, I heard a couple seconds there. I think I saw Will and maybe Tracy. Um, all right, great. We've got a motion and a second. Any discussion on this? All right, seeing no hands raised and hearing no discussion. All in favor of allowing HMIS staff to onboard Crescent Community Health as a participating agency in HMIS, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, in which case, Rachel, we can record uh, all members voting Crescent affirmative and welcome to Crescent. Thank you, Brandy. Thank you so much, guys. Okay. You're
Thank you, Brandy. We'll follow up with some more specific information by email. Okay, and I'll hop off. Have a good day, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Brandy. And now it is time we're we're doing a double feature of the Shanley show today. Uh, Shanley, I think you are going to take us through the data quality monitoring. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I think with the time constraint, this will be just a bit of an introduction for what we'll do next month. Um, so I've uh, given y'all some updates here before about the working group that met to establish the benchmarks that will be implemented in the data quality plan. And um, so by next month, you'll have the final or first draft that is going to be ready for review from this committee of the data quality plan. The thing, though, that needs to be worked on next is establishing the data quality monitoring plan. So that's going to be the actionable steps that make sure that that's not just an arbitrary document that sits around doing nothing. Um, so, Stephanie, if you wouldn't mind passing me the presenter privilege again. Just, this will be quick sort of where we are now and some things that will need to be discussed as well. So, sorry. So, for now, we have gotten to the point where we know that we will be implementing the data quality monitoring plan, which will include an annual monitoring visit from the uh, MHID staff, the HMIS lead. We're going to work to combine this with any current monitoring visits that are already happening with MDHA, just so that that's not an extra burden on agencies. So, wherever possible, we'll work hard to do that. Each agency's data quality will be measured against the benchmarks laid out in the data quality plan. And this is going to be regardless of whether they are HUD funded or just participating for a variety of other reasons. Agencies will be encouraged to complete a quarterly self check on their data quality and will provide a lot of support around that, especially as we get started. The working group that set the benchmarks felt really strongly about this as a way to just make sure data quality looks good on a regular basis rather than just once a year when that's like a whole headache in getting caught up. And then in conjunction with that, um, our team will be responsible for running and sending quarterly reports to each of the agencies to highlight any potential trouble spots. So the questions that we will need to discuss here in this space next time is, around strategically when this should happen each year? Should each agency be monitored at the same time? Should this be regarding any other deadlines that are coming up in the community, maybe around ESG or CSC deadlines? Um, what will happen to the results of the monitoring visits? So is that just going to be shared with the agency? Will that be posted somewhere? Will agency names be taken off? So just establishing some sort of procedures so that we can actually do something with those results and make them meaningful. And then HUD technical assistance strongly recommends that there's some sort of corrective action plan available, not necessarily in a punitive way, but so that agencies are aware of the errors or issues that need to be addressed moving forward and so that they feel supported and actually making sure that those get done. Um, so. Also, some things that still need to be done is to create and or update a tool that will be used as the quarterly self monitoring check and as well as the annual monitoring sort of tool that we will use. So right now, many of you are familiar with the COC funding process right now, the performance evaluation committee is responsible for reviewing those agencies data quality. So there is sort of like an informal, well, it's a very formal process, but um, we've talked about sort of expanding that around the entire system. And so using that tool maybe as a starting point to um, incorporate into this process as well. Creating again, sort of a timeline or a calendar for when monitoring should happen. Um, we do need to determine which committee will be most appropriate to review these monitoring results and do something meaningful with them. So we've definitely discussed this as a potential space um, or potentially the performance evaluation committee taking on that responsibility. So that's still to be determined. 
And then HUD technical assistance also recommended that we formalize a documentation procedure so that um, that sort of communication around potential trouble spots is clear and consistent and documented very clearly as well. So that was meant to be a longer conversation. So um, I hope that you all have a lot to think about so that next month we can discuss some of those things. And like I said, I'll make sure to get the draft out of the data quality plan and the data quality monitoring plan with some of those questions highlighted for us to review. Great, Shanley, that's super helpful. I actually think it's worth spending some more time um, you know, I don't, I don't hate breaking this up into two conversations, but sort of like, you know, um, summary version presented more documentation to think about, and then a, a more detailed, uh, discussion with action steps in a follow up meeting. I think that's going to work out just fine. Of course, I think it'll be up to Stephanie. So, you know, not my problem after this. Um, no, this is great. Uh, anybody have questions for Shanley before we kind of move the, the remainder of that discussion to a future meeting no not a question but i would like to say that um thank you for that hard work and i i think it is very very valuable especially as we bring on um other agencies um i think um making sure that we're setting those expectations ahead of time and understanding and then with that understanding then they'll know who to reach out to for help because um I, I agree too. We can't, we can't leave it for a year because I'll just get frustrated. Is my guess. Um, yeah. uh, the only question I have is for agencies that have multiple programs entering in HMIS. Um, when it comes to like a corrective action plan, is it for the entire agency or is it more of like a program by program? That's a really good question and. Centerstone in particular is kind of siloed into several different like big umbrellas. And so that's definitely something we need to consider. Um, in a conversation with TA, they recommended that monitoring is done by agency rather than by project type. But I do think that we, we should develop something that works for our community. Um, and so that'll definitely need to be considered. That's a really good question. Thanks. Yeah, I just wanted to ask before I forget to ask. So. Definitely thought we could talk about more. Well, I'll just add, like, obviously, going back to what we were talking about earlier, Shanley, like, when I when I hear about data quality, like, that concerns, like, one, we definitely need to have it, totally get that. But right now, if you were to do a data quality uh, for our team, because of the way that things are working right now, it would look very, very poor, uh, which is part of our concern. And so, like, I don't want... Um, but it actually, yeah, like the system as we have it currently is broken and would be um, a very poor representation and inaccurate, re for sure, inaccurate representation of the work being done by the staff. So just know now going like, while I want something like this, um, until some of those things are worked out, like it's, it's not something I want to move, I personally want to move forward with because I don't want my agency or my team to be negatively penalized for something they don't have control over, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes total sense. And one thing that I didn't mention is that a large part of the conversation that was had in the working group was about how to use this first year as a starting point. I mean, data sharing is brand new. And as a community, there is so much to learn about that. And we want to sort of find those spots where we have room to learn or grow or improve the system. We definitely don't want this to be punitive or like you're doing a bad job. I think that this first year is going to be a real learning curve, an opportunity for us to find those spots rather than, I mean, like everyone knows how hard you and your PATH team are working. And so we want this not to be punitive in areas where we're just learning about data sharing. Like we know that's not your fault, so. Thank you. And I guess I would just get yeah. to chime in oh, real, ahead, real briefly and say, uh, first of all, uh, great job, Shanley. I can tell that you spent a lot of time you know, thinking about and drawing out questions. And um, 
at points. And then also it, it, it just sounds from the, the level um, of complexity that it might even be worth spending the entire time next time. Well, not it might be, it, it would be. Uh, and I think that, that it might be good to just only schedule that for next time because there's so much there. I, well, I will I'm not say responsible I think for setting helpful. the agenda, but I agree. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think, I mean, in, I mean, right, this is, I think, the pivot point we're looking at, right, is data quality is, I think, one of the next logical um, focal elements of this committee, uh, you know, in addition to participating agency um, growth. And, you know, I, so I think it's totally reasonable to, um, save enough space on an upcoming agenda. But, um, you know, again, I, I think at this point, Stephanie and Rachel and Shanley uh, can collaboratively do that with Will. And we will, you know, my expectation is, the other thing I should note here is, I'm not leaving the committee. I'm just stepping down as chair. So I'll, I will still be here along for the ride to participate. But Ben, I, I totally agree with you that this is, this is worth some serious discussion by this committee. All right, um, it is 10.03. We have reached the end of the stuff on the agenda. Does anybody have any other business that we need to consider today? All right, seeing no hands, hearing none. Welcome to our new members. Congratulations to the new committee chair and vice chair. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing us uh, invest some time in the data quality process. Thanks everybody. We are adjourned. Thank you, Freddie, for leadership. Y'all have a great day. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Take care.